few odds and ends. Um, uh, so one of the things when I started this, I was like, I'm gonna be so hip and cool, like I'm gonna like have my iPad and I can just, you know, and it's like, no, actually, uh, the video conference software doesn't, uh, doesn't work uh, with iPads because it requires Flash, right? And so I was just like, you know, all my students, I was like, you know, this is like if you have an iPhone, like, you know, mo not everyone, you know, has mobile phones, but, but most people at this, you know, stage have smartphones. And so I thought, you know, look, like if you have a smartphone, like just, you know, shoot your video on that. Like you don't need, that way you don't need to go into, you know, if you don't, like obviously you can go to the computer lab and they have technology there, um, you know, but, but like it's a pretty low bar to entry for, for most of today's students. And then I realized like actually all my students who are Apple device dependent, um, you know, if you have a laptop, it's fine. But, you know, for the, yeah, it was, it was a, a sad day when I realized I wasn't as cool as I thought I was. <laughs> Yeah, and for the student ID, Sharon sort of already said it, but one, one thing that I, I wish was different was that the number that like students write on the front of their tests appeared yes. somewhere in Canvas, yes. but it, it doesn't. Yes. And, and where that has showed up for me, like Sharon was talking about changing grades by like rounding or that sort of thing. Where it's come up for me is I don't want to have something in my syllabus of everybody who gets a 98% gets an A plus. But I, I do want the option of giving somebody an A plus once in a while. Mm. And that's something where I have to go manually do it inside of web grades. I can't do it inside of Canvas. Yeah, and just, just to add to that, the grading problem is that if you can't read the handwriting, I know I shouldn't have to, but we do, of a student. Um, and I think my roll book looks like the most popular names in about five or six countries in the world. So I've got the same last name, many. I, I cannot identify the student because there's no way to put search by ID, student ID number. Yeah, or maybe they use like their Americanized name exactly. and not, not their exactly. official name. Yeah, exactly. So then, um, and then the final point is, uh, I talked about waitlisting, but um, so it, didn't, it used to be that, I guess technically via UC like system-wide policy, uh, students are not allowed to access content unless they are enrolled. And so this leads to all sorts of problems when you're doing something online because normally you would just tell students like, yeah, just show up for the first few weeks of class and that way you'll be up to speed. But um, I can't actually add people from the wait, or now I can, but yeah, there's sort of this clunky workaround where you have to sort of add students one person at a time or put a list of names in and you can't just click a button and say like, Y'all just show up and, and you know, we'll see who gets in. So. Okay. So now we can open up for any questions. Um, it's a way, when I said I wanted to participate in the panel, I imagined it being all questions. So I'm, I'm very happy with <laughs> questions. Uh, all questions for which I would have no answers. <laughs> So we were hoping to do that with the Google Hangout on air. Um, uh, and so, you know, because there you could actually, you know, have it all recorded and, you know, someone could come back and watch it later. Um, you know, on the other hand, we we're also sort of like, well, but like we want to like force people to be there, but like it would be nice to like have it there so that if someone, you know, had, you know, some number of medical emergencies where like people are literally video conferencing from like the stairwell of a hospital or something like that, right? And so, um, uh, for cases like that, like it'd be nice to like have it saved where you could where you could show it to people. Um, the the problem so the problem is how I do it right now is I want to send them one link so that they can always click this link to go to the the same space all the time. Um, and so how I end up structuring it is we literally start a video conference on like the first day of the quarter and it doesn't end until the very last day of the quarter. So it's, it would be like, you know, mostly you'd just be watched and nobody there. Um, uh, but yeah, but so that's something that we've gone back and forth on where I wish that there was like a way to say like, this is gonna be the same space and like the link is always gonna take you to that spot and it will just always open up, you know, an hour before and stay open an hour later. Um, but we haven't figured out how to, how to make that happen yet, but I would love to have that. Yeah, if a, if a conference is set to have a beginning and end time within the term, then once the end time is set, you, the students will have 10 days after that end time to go and watch the recording. Okay. Carrie, quick question. 
discussion? Can only students who participated review the recording, or can all students, whether or not they were there, see the recording? It depends on how it's configured. If all students are invited, then all students can see it. And if some students are invited, only the students are invited can see it. What tool is that usually using? Uh, it's currently using Big Blue Button. Oh, it's Big Blue. Mm -hmm. I have a question. They have 10 days until after the, it closes, not 10 days after it occurs. Correct. Yeah, that's interesting. Correct, and that's, that's um, um, I don't want to say a limitation, but it's something that is in place by Kansas. So I can't see Big Blue Button. Other questions? My family likes to remind me that, you know, whenever I'm involved in successful communication, it's a minor miracle. So I'm sure that, you know, <laughs> more things I said weren't clear. Um, so I use Canvas in a different institution and I use it by uh, I mean, I definitely speak for the skill in of like being super basic with it, but have, does anybody use like Clipper in their class or is that in any way integrated with Canvas or like do you do attendance stuff with Canvas? Um, at UCI, we do have an iClipper integration within Canvas. So instructors can go in and effectively enable the registration through the navigation, and then um, students will register their, their device through Canvas. Through Canvas, okay. What happens then as the instructors, you still have the software that you have on your computer. You're still going to do the same type of things where you run the sessions and you collect the data, and, and then what you'll do at the end of your sessions or whenever you're ready to, is you'll actually sync your information When you say session okay. in class. Okay. Yeah. And actually, we've got our iClicker group there, and we're going to do some additional sessions. You can really get to know what you're doing. The other thing that I'll mention as well is, is Canvas does come with an attendance tool that effectively lets you, as an instructor, go in for every day of class and identify a student as present, absent, or late. And what that does as you're Selecting the student's participation every day in class, Canvas behind the scenes is calculating an assignment score for them. So it actually puts an assignment in the gradebook, and at the end of the term, based on how, we're, how we have marked them through the term, it will give them a score out of, I think it's almost 100 for people that that as well. So there's some options for participation. But, you know, yeah, I mean, but that requires actually like looking to see that person. It's a small class. But it, it, <laughs> it, it seems like one student could just give another student they do. <coughs> they absolutely do. I mean, so this is one thing where, like, in, like, to the degree that you can get away from the physical clicker, right? Like, if this is happening in my class, basically that means someone has given someone else their login for everything UCI, which mm. maybe they do, but like, it's a little less likely, it's I think. Upon. Yes. <laughs> As things get more and more unique, the iClicker has a mobile solution for students to use their phones instead of yeah. a physical clicker. As things move more in that direction, a student's not going to give up their phone to another student yeah. um, to do that kind of thing for them. So. We had a uh, where a class of four, they had phones that they, they would actually check in class with their phone. Um, and there was this sort of grand plan that they would actually use like GPS mm -hmm. stuff to see if they were actually there, but that violated all sorts of mm -hmm. stuff being able to track students. So it turned out the phone was actually, they did use them, but actually it was more problems than they thought. Because you could check in from anywhere. Like you could check in from your house. I was talking to an IT for web yesterday who said that they were going to start using geofencing, which means you can only check in the class if you're in like your home. Wow. This is crazy. The other um, connection to that, there is a tool on campus called Check In that is developed by an instructor here on campus. Mm -hmm. So it does something very similar. Mm -hmm. um, um, because they're in ICS, we've worked with part of their computing group. So we do have some, we've streamlined some. I've messed with uh, like what what is an A that kind of thing, but nothing more sophisticated than that. Well, 
One of the things that's coming out in the next couple of weeks from Canvas is a tool called Mastery Paths. And it basically lets you differentiate instructions. So you can say students should follow this path, and it says here they should look at this number of points and this assignment. It's got some really interesting potential that might do very good. So I do this totally retro thing. I have 240 students and, and they have to come with paper and pen. I'm sorry. It's the only way I figured out how to do it. All these technological advances, they have, you know, it, so should they do it online in class to Canvas? In the meantime, they're texting their friends that yeah. we're giving, it just, and the irony in this, and I have to say, is that I never thought this possible. So I'm the one that works with the quizzes and, and I also visited all the students' discussion sections, and I think I probably know 100 students in this class, which is sort of a remarkable advantage of, of this incredible amount of time it takes to do with these quizzes. But so how weird is that? Um, but I, I, I'm sorry, I just couldn't figure out another solution. I can speak to that a little bit. I do, I do polls. I was using poll everywhere, but then that's limited unless you have a paid account. So Google Forms, it's, it's brilliant. And I just get the shareable link and I add that to Canvas under modules. So then we say, okay, we're going to Canvas week eight, look at the poll, they click it, and then they can go and take it. And then I just pull up um, my side of the Google Form for the results. And I found that <coughs> works really well. And, huh? Yeah, I think you can. But, uh, and for quizzes, to help avoid cheating, I have its passcode protected. And so when they come in class, I don't publish the PowerPoint until class starts, and then they can see the passcode for the quiz. And then it's also timed. Okay, right? And then I can also lock it. So let's say hypothetically they text their friend the code. Their friend has to be up at 8 a.m. because the qu quiz is gonna like lock at 8.15 because I know even if I started a little bit late, we're gonna be done by 8.15. And so if they wanna try that hard to cheat, like they have to pick your battles. <laughs> you really do. And that's not one of them that I've chosen to <coughs> on. So I do use the, cause it's the, because I was sort of on early adopting Canvas and also um, it's kind of a weird class. Like it's not, it's different from how normal classes are set up. So actually they have to go through and like, have they have a little quiz about like, you know, what are their expectations, you know, how they have to, you know, a bunch of stuff like this that they have to take before they can move on actually in the class. And that, that seems to work pretty well. I haven't played a, too much with sort of <coughs> real time quizzes or like I don't have like weekly quizzes, but, um, but the quiz infrastructure, it does seem pretty flexible in Canvas and I've been quite pleased with it. No, um, so I'll sort of do like very informally, right? Where I'll just say like, hey, like, you know, everyone who would, you know, send their kids to private school or something, you know, like raise your hand and they can like all like raise their hands on their little buttons or whatever. And, <laughs> but like, you know, one could be much more systematic about things like that. I just, for me, I, I want to sort of foster the discussion, so. In that case, uh, let me just say thank you again, uh, first to our panelists who have so graciously given their time and their thoughts and their, their perspective and experience on the Canvas transition, and to all of you for attending today. Uh, please don't hesitate to get in contact with us. I've got cards if you want them. We're very easy to reach through ee at uci.edu, and we very, very much want to hear from you about how we can help, what's working, what's not, what do you wish we could do. Please come talk to us so we can figure that out. So thank you, and panelists, thank you.